any long term viewers of the channel might recognise this Amiga 500 Plus. It's been sitting on the shelves behind me here for a couple of years now. In fact, six, seven months ago, we pulled it down to do a few modifications. Fitted a two megabyte memory expansion and that floppy looking thing sticking out the side. That's a GoTech with OLED display. Now the main reason I actually bought this machine in the first place was to fit a vampire accelerator. I even applied for my Vampire. For those that don't know, it is an FPGA based accelerator for the Amiga. Quite high demanded thing and yes you gotta apply for it on the website and wait your turn. Well when my turn came around I chickened out. I didn't fancy spending the money. Now if you look to other computer platforms out there, one that jumps out to me is the BBC Micro. Now, albeit that is an 8-bit computer, it's definitely not on par with our Amiga here. But one thing those guys have done is incorporate a Raspberry Pi into their machines as a co-processor and that allows them to run far more demanding software on their old systems. So, why can we not do something similar with the Amiga? Well, now we can with one of these, a Raspberry Pi Model 3A and one of these, a Pi Storm. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to finish putting this thing together. It comes mostly assembled. All the surface mounted stuff is on there. We just have to do the through hole stuff. Then that fits in here in place of the 68000 processor. It's not a co-processor cool like the Pi would be in the BBC Micro. This is a complete replacement. And that should allow us to emulate a fairly fast 68030 processor in here. We can even mount disk images that we can create in WinUAE. And to top it off, we can even get RTG graphics. One thing at a time though. First thing we need to do is mount all the through hole stuff onto this board. So all we have to fit are the two strips of pins. These will go into the processor socket on the Amiga motherboard and then the GPIO header that our Raspberry Pi will plug into. Just to make sure that we get these straight though, what I'm going to do is pull out the spur Amiga 500 motherboard and hopefully we can force these down in here into this processor socket. Then we can drop this on. Making sure we get the orientation correct. And that should hold everything nicely for us while we solder it up. I half expected that to be pointing the other way so that the Pi would sit out here. But obviously, with that like that, then the Pi must sit on top of this. Anyway, let's get this soldered up. Right, well that's it done. All our parts are soldered on. I had to wind up pulling out the big uh, soldering station to do this. The little 30 watt iron I was using. Um, Mustn't just have enough thermal mass for the likes of the ground plane on here. Because some of the pins I just could not get the solder to flow. A little bit of flux helped as well. But that's the easy bit. What we'll have to do now is move over to the PC and set up our SD card for the Pi. So we're just going to be following the simple quick start guide over on the GitHub. I will leave a link to that in the video description. Right, the first thing we need to do, download Raspberry Pi OS. The light version is recommended and we need to write that to an SD card. 8 gig is plenty. Well, I just bought a couple of brand new SD cards from Amazon. The smallest ones I could find are actually 16 gig. So we have plenty plus plenty. And we can use this Raspberry Pi Imager tool. 
and we want light. So we'll just let that write that image onto the SD card. And then we'll get our Pi Storm with the Raspberry Pi 3A into the Amiga to continue setting up. Okay, SD card is ready. Let's get this processor out and get this thing in. So there is an outline of a socket shown here in white. And there's a little notch at that end. That lines up with a notch at this end of the processor socket. We're going to need our Raspberry Pi. And that goes on there like that. And then the SD card. Goes in there like that. HDMI. That I have going to the capture card on the PC. And we need a keyboard. And supposedly if this is all working right. What we should see according to the GitHub, is a rainbow colored screen. So let's go to OBS and let's power on the Amiga. Okay, so now I need to log in. And I'm just following along from that simple quick start guide again. Because to be honest with you, I don't really know the first thing about Raspberry Pis. But we need to run sudo raspi-config and I need to set a few things up. So it recommends setting the resolution to 720p but I think I'm going to select 720p and 50Hz and that's just because this is a PAL Amiga and would natively be outputting a 50 hertz signal. If by any chance that is wrong and screws things up, well, we can always come back and change it. Okay, so hopefully that's worked and everything is nice set up as we need it. So going back to the quick start guide again, the final steps we need to take here to get things up and running. There's a few commands that we need to enter. sudo app get update. Okay. Then sudo app get install get libs. What's that? DL2-dev. I have no idea what any of this means, by the way. I'm just typing in what it says on the quick start guide. Okay, next one. Then we need to CD Pi Storm and make. Okay, next thing we need to do then, according to the guide, is install the FPGA Bitstream update. So to do that, it is sudo app get install open CD, no, open OCD. Then we need to make CPLD programming shell scripts executable. And I assume you only need to do the one that is relevant to your Pi Storm board. Mine is the revision B with the EPM 240. So let's just do that. 
Come on, not found. You see, this is where it falls down for me. Because I'm not 100% sure what has gone wrong. I'm going to have to go on to the Discord and ask a few questions. In fact, no, never worry. I'm an idiot. I was typing CD. It's CH mod. Right, hopefully that worked this time. And then we need to run sudo dot forward slash n prog underscore 240 dot sh. Shutdown command invoked. And according to the quick start guide, if we get that, that means the CPLD has been programmed successfully. Right, so next thing we can do then, you can start the PyStorm emulator with a basic config by typing sudo space dot forward slash emulator and hitting enter. So is that it running? It's telling us there that the CPU type is set to an OTO and that is the standard one from the configuration file. We're going to change that to an 030 later though. It hasn't opened a kickstart ROM, but that's okay because I haven't put one onto the SD card yet. We are going to set kickstart 3.1 on there eventually. It has allocated 128 megabytes of RAM. That's fast RAM. There's no drives mounted, but that's okay because I haven't put any hard files on there yet. Right, I dare say that is it. I wonder what happens if we power cycle the Amiga. Is it going to automatically boot the Raspberry Pi with the emulation running? You would have thought so, but um, let's find out. So it hasn't automatically started anything. It's wanting us to log in again. So that's no good for you know, a permanent solution because we're not always going to have the keyboard hooked up to the Pi. Obviously there's something I am missing here. So it seems as if I will have to go to that Discord and ask a few questions after all. So after a brief chat with the guys on Discord, they pointed me towards this Pi Storm on Pi Boot. That's exactly what we need. And if we follow the instructions here, hopefully that will get us sorted. So I have downloaded this file here, pystorm.service, and we need to copy that into this directory here on the Pi. So to do that, I'm going to use this bit of software here, WinSCP. This seems to be the easiest way to do this anyway. Let's connect to the Pi. And I'm just going to copy this into our pystorm directory. There it is, that's it done. We can then log into the Pi remotely as well, just through a command prompt. So ssh pi at 192.168.2.5. So if we go into that Pi Storm directory and list, right, there is this Pi Storm service, and we need to copy that. So cp And that is going to etc system d system. And of course, we don't have the permission, so we need to do sudo and then all the same again. Now, there probably is an easier way to do this. In fact, you can probably do this direct from that Win SCP software, but I just can't figure out how to add the permission in this software to allow me to do it. So this is how I'm doing it. Right, that is that copied in there. And we can confirm that. And here, if we just browse. There it is. 
then to enable it, all we need to do is sudo systemctl enable pystorm. And hopefully this works. Okay, that seemed good. So there's a few other things we can do just in this uh, little GitHub here. We can disable a couple of things to get the Pi to boot slightly faster. We can disable the Rainbow Splash, set the bootloader delay to zero seconds, default is one second, and disable the Bluetooth. Okay, let's try it out. Right, let's just try this. Uh, the Amiga's connected up over RGB, the HDMI. Um, I'm not convinced. But let's see what it's gonna do. Well, we're getting a video signal. But, um, black screen. It sort of makes me think it's not working. Wait, it's working? It's, is it working? Let's see if we're getting an ADF of Workbench or something onto a USB stick and we'll get it into that GoTech. Right, I have put Workbench 2.04 on that USB stick there. For whatever reason, this one just did not want to work with uh, the flash floppy firmware on that thing. It just would not read it. No idea why. Anyway, that one works and Workbench is selected as image 001. Let's see if this is going to boot. Right, there it goes. And yes, it is reading the disk. It is seemingly working fine. Let's just see when Workbench comes up, how much memory we have. Right, there we are, Workbench has booted. So we have our two megabytes of chip RAM, which is right in that 500 plus because we modified it for that. And an absolute pile of other memory. So far, so good. Next thing I want to do is get kickstart 3.1 on there and um, we'll just boot again perhaps to workbench 3.1 next time just to make sure that works okay back on the pc again and within win scp i have our kick 3.1 rom file here i'm just going to copy it into that pi storm directory there it is and then we need to edit the default config file. And the file we're trying to load is kick31.rom. Right, that'll do for now. Just make one change at a time. Let's see first of all what kickstart screen the Amiga boots to. And if it is 3.1 then we'll try and load Workbench 3.1. Okay, let's try this. Let's see first of all what kickstart screen it gives us. Should be 3.1. And there it goes, indeed. 3.1 ROM. Certainly seems as if it has worked. I've put Workbench 3.1 on this. So hopefully it will boot into that. And there it is, the very familiar Workbench 3.1. Still got all our memory, 2 meg of graphics RAM and 128 megabytes of other. That will be the fast RAM. I am very impressed. Right, next thing to do, we need to create a hard file in Win UAE. I'm going to set up, say, a 1 gig hard file, install. Well, I was going to install OS 3.1 on that. 
I think though, let's try and install OS 3.9. We'll transfer that hard file across to the Pi. Then if that works, we can have a go at RTG graphics. So I'm not going to show you the full setup procedure for installing Workbench and whatnot. You've seen me do that plenty of times before. One thing I do want to show you though, is here under the CD and hard drives tab. When creating your hard file that we're going to use on the Pi, this here must be set to the top value RDB slash OFS FFS. We're going to go with one gig, so 1024. And we need to make sure we click this button here, hard drive controller, full drive RDB mode. That is critical to make sure that your hard file will work. Create. We'll save it in there. And we'll just call it hard file 39 because I'm going to install Workbench 3.9 on it. Right, so I'm just going to go ahead and set up Workbench. Then we'll be back in a minute to copy that hard file across to the SD card and hopefully the Pi Storm will boot to it. So I'm just copying the hard file across to the Pi Storm here. One gig total size, so it is going to take a few minutes to transfer. And on there, I've just set up a fairly basic OS 3.9 install. I did put WHD load on there with a couple of games, so we can try that out. The Picasso drivers are in there too. And of course, we're going to have to run a benchmark, so there's a copy of sysinfo on there as well. Okay, so our hard file 39.hdf has finally finished copying across. I'm just referring back to the GitHub again then. Instructions to use Pi SCSI. Simply enable it by uncommenting set var Pi SCSI line in default config. Add disk images to the Pi SCSI interface by uncommenting Pi SCSI 0 and Pi SCSI 0 1 lines, editing them to point to the disk images you want to use. Right. So this should be fairly straightforward. Let's edit this. Now, where is it? So the set for Pi SCSI we're looking for. There it is. So uncomment that and uncomment that one. I'm going to change that to hard file 39. Isn't that right? Yep. Let's put a capital H there. I don't think it would be case sensitive, but you never know. Right, save. And let's see if this is going to work. Okay, here we go. Yeah, it looks like it's doing something. And there we are. Workbench. So, seemingly that worked fine. Perfect. Okay, you know what we're going to have to do first? Sysinfo. So we're still just on the OTO CPU. I am going to change it to the 68030 a bit later. But speed, let's see what we're getting. 15.13 MIPS, that is pretty impressive. <laughs> 792 megahertz. Uh, yeah, I don't think so somehow. But that is a pretty impressive score. What about our drive speed? Twenty-three megabytes a second, yeah, flying along. Frontier, I suppose. Let's just watch a bit of the intro. Let's see what it's like. I would expect it to be absolutely silky smooth.
and then sure after that I think we'll just have a go with uh, the Picasso drivers and see if we can't get RTG out of this thing. Buttery smooth. That's enough of that, as everybody has seen the Frontier demo a million times. Let's see if we can figure out how to get RTG working. In fact, you know, before we do anything, I suppose we need to enable it in that config file, don't we? So we'll just reconnect to the Pi again. And we need to edit that um, config file. So, now what we'll do, see we're over here, let's just change that to the O30. And then we need to enable RTG, which is this one. So we'll just save the changes and let's reboot our Amiga 500. Right, so let's just quickly try sysinfo again. We see if we are now running the 030, and indeed we are. But look at that. It has also added an FPU. All we did in that config file was change the CPU type. But in doing so, it has added our 6881 FPU. Right, what about speed? Yeah, so it's about the same as it was before. And this time we also get our M flops as 7.02. So that's the sort of speed you can expect out of the Pi Storm in its current offering while using the Raspberry Pi Model 3A. 15 MIPS, that is one incredibly fast 030 processor. Because in my CD32, with its 54 megahertz 030, it's getting what? It's about 10.5 MIPS. So this is 50% faster again. Right, RTG. First thing I need to do is install the Picasso drivers. I have never done anything RTG on any Amiga. So this might be a bit of a learning curve. What type of graphics board do you want to use? I have no idea what to select here. I think I need to go and do a little bit of homework before we go any further. Just abort for now. Okay, so I've pulled up the instructions from the GitHub. So we'll just run this setup again. So at this point here, the instructions tell us to select any graphics driver that you want. And something like Picasso 4 or CyberVision 64 slash 3D is recommended. So let's just go Picasso 4. Okay, so there was a file that we had to download from the GitHub, which I have done and copied onto the Amiga. And it's in here, and it's that one. pygraphics020.card. And we need to copy that 
into our lubes and Picasso 96 drawer. So that goes in there. So select that side. There we are. Right, the next thing it wants us to do is edit the tool types for the monitor file you installed to load Pi Graphics 020.card instead. So we need to navigate to devs, monitors, and this Picasso 4, and we want icons and information. And then we need to change this top line then. Take that out of there. And it's Pi Graphics 020. Or Pig FX 020. Right, save. And reset. Right, that seems good so far. So back in here. And I go into prefs and this Picasso 96 mode. Could not find any modes. Right. So the way I understand this works, new item in there. We right click attach setting to and there's our board zero Pi Storm RTG. Then we'll put a new resolution in, 640 by 480, and a new mode, and we can test it. But if we're going to test it, we're going to have to get an HDMI cable from the Pi into our capture device. And then if I'm quick, what I think I can do is press test on the Amiga and then swap our converter here over to its HDMI pass through and hopefully we'll get the test pattern up here. If I can find the right button and there it is. This is looking pretty good. I think we are working. So let's add another resolution. Let's go what 800 by 600. And we'll change the depth this time to true color. Right, how about we test this one? Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And then if I'm right, all we have to do is go into our prefs, screen mode, and the new ones should be in here. There they are. So let's just try the 800 by 600, should we? Pi Storm RTG 800 by 600. Use. And there it is. <laughs> Doesn't it look great? Check it out. And that has given us back our full two megabytes of chip RAM but wow look at the detail I've never seen so much detail in that bar I've never used RTG on an Amiga before that is pretty mind blown now the thing is if we go into the likes of sys info here our screen is going to go black because sys info doesn't work under RTG we need to change back to the RGB output from the back of the Amiga. And then if we quit out of this, the screen's gonna go, well, gonna sit gray, but we need to change the input over again. And there's our workbench. I really can't get over just how clean that picture looks. That is, that is unbelievable. Well, there we are, one Pi Storm finally up and running. This has taken me quite a few days to get to where we are now. Plenty of reading in the background. So hopefully this little video will help someone set up their Pi Storm. It is still very much work in progress. So 
do bear that in mind if you are going to pick one up. It's not just plug and play and away you go. There is quite a bit of configuring to do and I'm sure what I've just put together will be out of date in no time whatsoever. But for what it is so far, I have to say I am very, very impressed. So our little Pi Storm with its Raspberry Pi 3A. Total cost there, what's about £50 or so? Not bad for an 030 accelerator giving us 15 MIPS, RTG graphics, and that onboard hard file. One gigabyte of storage so far. There's a 16 gig SD card in there. I think what I'll do is go back to that, create another hard file, and stick what a full WHD load library in there. I may as well. And while I'm at that, actually, has anyone any recommendations for some RTG software that I could put on there to try? As I said back in the day, my Amiga never had any RTG capabilities, so I really don't know anything about it. If anyone could recommend any software to try, please let me know in the comments below. But that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this wee video. If you did, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG. And I'll see you next time.